Kom, lille bær, Wolf! Søn af King Arvan og Warraven! Og jeg er hans vengeance! Vengeance is probably one of the sweetest human emotions there is. A pure and righteous expression of anger and rage. The destruction of your enemy, who, by all the laws of gods and men, fully deserves it. The restoration of order and balance in the universe. Vengeance just feels so damn good. And this is why it is a story arc that is present in many, many films and series. Whether it's vengeance against a corrupt court system, vengeance against the emperor responsible for murdering your family, or vengeance against those who killed your puppy. Then of course there's Tarantino, a filmmaker with a particular love of vengeance in his stories. Tarantino often unleashes his vengeance against entire parts of history. For example, in Django Unchained, he takes revenge on American slavery, and in Inglorious Bastards, we see a Jewish vengeance against Hitler's Nazi Germany. And of course, there is the ultimate revenge story in his filmography, which is Kill Bill. Now, in most of these films, vengeance is celebrated, righteous, and oh so sweet. At the end of Kill Bill, the bride gets her vengeance and is reunited with her daughter. Now, studies have shown that when it comes to fantasizing about revenge, it releases dopamine in the brain. So, of course, audiences love a good vengeance story. And when first looking at Robert Eggers' The Northman, this seemed exactly what we could expect. The trailer of the film is a combo shot of adrenaline and testosterone straight into the heart. A brutal, bloody story of revenge. But when you actually see The Northman, I think it gives a much more nuanced take on the concept of vengeance, which I want to explore in this video. I will avenge your father. Save your mother. I won't kill you, Fielder. The need for vengeance is interesting. It is something that is deeply rooted within our psychology and serves an evolutionary purpose. When someone hurts us, wrongs us, or betrays us, carrying out vengeance serves as a deterrent to prevent further harm in the future. In his book, Everything is Fucked, a book about hope, Mark Manson writes that there are two sides of our brain. On the one hand, there's the thinking, rational brain, the brain that makes well-considered decisions based on weighing all the relevant factors. And then on the other side, there's the emotional, instinctual brain, or the feeling brain, as Mark Manson calls it. Most of us assume that when it comes to our consciousness, our rational brain is in control, that we make decisions based on given information and a weighing of the facts, and that we have to exert control over our emotional impulses. But this is not the case. The reality is that our emotional, instinctual brain is always driving the car of our consciousness. Without emotions, without pleasure, pain, hope, fear, stress and excitement, there is no motive to do anything. As Manson writes, we are moved to action only by emotion. Emotion is the biological hydraulic system that pushes our bodies into movement. We act from these emotional instincts and then our rational brain devises a narrative to explain it. And this is the idea that we can use to look at vengeance in The Northman, a film that transports us back to a brutal, more animalistic part of history. As film critic Robert Daniel writes, The Northman is the kind of movie where even the mud has rage. It is a visceral film filled with codas to the inescapable darker regions of nature, animal, elemental, and the harshest of all, human. It is a film that brings us back toward primordial origins. And this is also what distinguishes the story of Hamlet from Shakespeare's Hamlet. As you probably already heard, the story of Hamlet is actually what inspired Shakespeare to write Hamlet. 
But as Peter Bradshaw points out in The Guardian, among its many acts of violence, this film chops off the first syllable of Hamlet's indecision. It hacks away the Elizabethan melancholy and existential hesitation that Shakespeare grafted onto his anguished hero, and turns him into a single-minded warrior who is very buff and roars with neck tendons flaring like peacock feathers. He is a loincloth wearing, wolf haired sporting guy who frankly isn't that worried about being or not being, if only in the sense that the former applies to him and the latter to his enemies. And I think that this is a great starting point for a story about vengeance, the brutal, animalistic, the instinctual. Because that is where the drive for revenge comes from. It is an emotional response from the feeling brain, an instinct as natural as the instinct for food or sleep or sex. If a dog gets bitten, it bites back. In the early parts of the film, we see Emlet and other Northmen engage in several Viking rituals that connect them to these animalistic instincts. You are dogs that wish to become men. Prove you are not a dog. Before battle, Emlet and the other Viking berserkers perform a ritual that connects them to wolves in order to use these animalistic violent instincts in battle. But there is more to vengeance than just an animalistic instinct, although this is where it starts as a purely emotional, instinctual response, we also have to look at how vengeance became a core aspect of Emlet's identity and a core aspect of Viking culture as a whole. In Everything is Fucked, Mark Manson writes how values are the product of emotions. When we feel something, our thinking brain will create a narrative to explain that emotion. And these narratives, they stick to our minds and become a value. Our identities are a network of these value narratives with, at their root, emotional experiences. And when we are young, our identities are incredibly fragile because we have experienced little. And this is why severe childhood trauma, like watching your father get murdered by your uncle, can define your identity. Emlet's quest for vengeance is deeply rooted within him and the narrative that he constructed around his emotional experience is one of his father as a noble king and good man, a sweet and caring mother and his uncle as an evil, jealous usurper and murderer. This narrative gives Emlet's life meaning and structure and because this narrative was installed in him at a very young age, it becomes the core of his identity. Now the need for vengeance is such a strong emotional need because as Manson explains, we are always trying to make sense of our lives and the world and give meaning to our experiences. Because we experience our entire lives through our own perspective, we are in our own experiences the center of the universe. If someone hurts us or mistreats us, this creates a moral imbalance. It destroys the narratives of meaning we create for ourselves. It can push us into an existential crisis because we are forced to deal with the idea that the universe is random, that we don't matter, and that we can be destroyed without consequence that we are just cosmic dust. As Manson writes, when we are confronted with these moral gaps, it creates an overwhelming emotional response towards equalization, a return to moral balance. This equalization restores hope, hope that the world, our world, has meaning and structure. And he also writes that when we can't restore moral balance, if we can't get vengeance, we tend to create another narrative to add meaning to our pain and suffering. Then it must be because we deserve it. And this is why people who suffer from abuse at a young age often struggle with feelings of inferiority their entire adulthood. So there is a deep psychological need for vengeance, but of course, Emlet's need for vengeance is not only embedded in his psychology, it is also embedded in Viking culture as a whole. 
even before Amlet's father and king is murdered, he is already foretold that when his father will die in battle, Amlet will have to avenge him or live his entire life in shame. Should I fall by the enemy's sword, you must avenge me or forever live in shame! I will, father! I will! My place will not rest till it's drunk the blood from his open neck! I'll live always without fear! Emlet is fated to avenge his father. The Viking world that Emlet inhabits is a brutal warrior culture where death can come for you or your kin at any time. As Manson writes in Everything is Fucked, emotional experiences create value narratives and multiple value narratives create identity, but on a larger scale these narratives are adopted and integrated by large groups of people and that creates a culture. This culture then again in combination with Amlet's personal experiences create a need for vengeance that consumes his entire life. And for the first two thirds of the film, we see everything through Emlet's experience. But then there is a twist. A twist that questions the morality of his quest for vengeance. His father turns out not to be the man he thought he was, and his mother was never kidnapped. No. His affections were only for silver and rotting his whores. I know not if he had heart enough to love you. Silence. Instead, his mother was raped by Emlet's father from which Emlet was born and Emlet's mother orchestrated his murder. And narratively, I think this was the strongest moment in an otherwise clear and cut story of vengeance. It was this twist that opens up the very nature of vengeance. It shows that the value narratives that we integrate around our emotional experiences that even become our identity are often not the complete truth. And that a righteous quest for vengeance can be more complicated than it seems. Ultimately, I think the Nordman's exploration of vengeance is nuanced. It is not a condemnation, nor is it a celebration of vengeance. After the truth about his mother's and father's murder is revealed, Emlet does not question the morality of his purpose. She's as evil as Fiona. I will destroy him and all that she loved. I will become a hailstorm of iron and steel. I will have my vengeance and more. Although he has a short moment where he seems to let go of his desire for vengeance in order to start a life and family with Olga, he ultimately does choose vengeance. He pays for this with his own life, but in the last moments of the film, we see in his eyes that, at least to Emlet, it was worth it. His bloodline is secure, he died nobly in battle, his destiny is fulfilled and a Valkyrie rides him to Valhalla. But in other ways, the films also questions the concept of vengeance. One of the biggest arguments against vengeance is that it creates an endless cycle of retaliation. And this is where in Viking culture and in the Northmen the most brutal parts of the time is shown as children are often murdered in order to prevent vengeance in the future. Early in the film, Amlet indirectly participates in this when children of a village that he and the other berserkers sect are locked in a barn and burnt alive. Amlet's quest for vengeance also results in him murdering Fjolnir's young son, an innocent boy who he even saved earlier in the film. And so slowly throughout the film, Emlet's role as a moral protagonist is questioned more and more. I would also argue that Robert Eggers' directorial style adds to this more complex vision on vengeance. As I've said, fantasizing about revenge and therefore most revenge stories make us feel good. It releases dopamine in the brain. We often walk out of the theater with a satisfied feeling. But after the Northman, at least for me, this was not how I walked out. And I think this has to do with the horror elements that are present in the Northman. Now, the first two films of Robert Eggers, The Witch and The Lighthouse, are straight up horror films. And for all its epic, brutal violence and beautiful natural imagery, I think some stylistic elements of Robert Eggers' experience in horror can be seen in The Northman.
It is a film that at moments is creepy and claustrophobic, which can give the audience an uncomfortable feeling, at least it did for me, which is very different from the feeling we normally get from vengeance stories. And whether Ergus directed this way on purpose or not, in the end, the climax of Emlet's saga of vengeance evokes two separate viewpoints. To Emlet, vengeance was his destiny and in the end, worth it, but to the viewer, it leaves a bitter aftertaste. Eggers himself argued that he felt Emlet threw away his whole life chasing after his destiny of revenge, a potential happy life with Olga and his children. But he wanted to show the brutality and reality of this historical period and Viking culture and how Emlet's obsession with vengeance was formed by this. A culture where dying in battle with honor and avenging your fallen kin are deeply embedded practices. You cannot kill me. Even if you were to strike me with your sword, it would not bite. It is not my time. But I also think that we need to recognize that the psychological need for vengeance is something that is deeply human and of all times and all cultures. We might look at the Northmen and see a brutal part of history we have long ago moved beyond, but maybe it is better to look at the ways our need for vengeance play out in our current contemporary culture, why vengeance is such a human need and how to navigate this. Because no matter how strong the urge for vengeance is, often it might be a dish best not served.